primarily used for executing large number of tests or a large number of virtual users um, concurrently. So it can be used for unit and integration testing as well, right? But we'll get to that in a bit in the next video or, or so. I will explain to you exactly what Load Runner is, exactly why we use it, and we'll you know get on. Maybe you already know what it is. Uh, so you know, just bear with me <laughs> if you know what it is. But for those that do not, uh, this will be great. So getting back to the subject, I, I kind of went off subject there. Uh, so that was server response time, you know, and that's what we're gonna concentrate on. But I just want to explain to you the other stuff as well so that you uh, know and understand the whole basic term of performance testing, right? So the next thing is render response time. And render response time, now this is a difficult thing to load testing tools to deal with, right? So with a, um, okay, so how can I explain this? A difficult thing for load testing tools to deal with is this render response time as they generally have no concept of what happens with the node apart from recognizing the period of time um, where there's no activity in the wire, right? So it's, it's difficult for the render response time because you have no physical way of going, oh, okay, yeah, um, you know, there is, um, you know, there's so many nodes and how are we gonna cut, you know, that it's difficult to, to get the render um, down to the T, right? So um, it's, it's, like I said, difficult for um, the load testing servers to understand this. To measure the render response time, it's generally necessary to include functional test scripts, right? And that's what we're going to work on. We're going to have a look at scripts. We're going to have a look at testing scripts as a part of the performance test scenario, which is a feature not offered by many load testing tools. Not all the load testing tools uses the scripting thing. Um, or using test scripts, but Load Runner uh, that is de developed by HP definitely covers the whole script uh, department. So that was like kind of looking at um, render response time. And the next thing that we're going to chat about is performance specification. And performance specification, now it is critical, right? It is a critical to detail. Performance specification is a requirement and document them in a performance test plan. Ideally, this is done during the requirement development phase of a system development project prior to any design effort. Um, so that's the thing though, when doing performance specification, it's, it's so important, right? You can't do a performance testing if you don't have the specification. And that kind of puts it hand in hand with performance testing goals or performance um, architecture testing goals. Um, you know, you're putting it down there and kind of going, okay, uh, what do we need? What, what goals can we set, right? We cannot set goals if we don't have the performance testing specification, right? So um, performance testing is frequently not performed against a specification. No one will have expressed what is the maximum acceptable response time in a given population of users would be, right? You don't know what that's going to be. You don't, you don't know how many users are going to go to your site, but you're going to do testing to accommodate as much as possible, right? You won't, you, I mean, you can have a million people going there at once. You can have 10 people going there at once. You don't know that, right? Uh, but you can do your testing around it, right? Performance testing is frequently used part of the process of performance profile tuning, okay? Um, the idea is to ideally um, get the weakest link kind of thing. There's... Um, Eventually, a part of system which, if it made to respond faster, will result in overall system running faster. This is sometimes a difficult task to identify which part of the system represents this critical path. Um, and some testing tools include or can have add-ons to provide um, instrumental that will run the server agents to report transaction time disable access time network overall and other server monitors so it's kind of a, you know it's a tricky thing especially when you do um, testing in general right and now we're going to get application that's doing the testing for us um, so you know there's a kind of aspects that can be covered and there's some that cannot be covered right so um, you know it's important to understand and that's why I kind of go you know that's why I'm going through you with this before we jump in into a uh, load runner is to kind of understand what can, what is realistic and what kind of terminology we need to follow 
uh, before we actually start doing the whole testing thing, right? So um, getting back to uh, the point that I want to make, <laughs> so um, without such instrumentation, one might have someone crouched over Windows Task Manager at the server to see how much CPU load performance tests are generating. Um, so basically, you know, if we didn't have any uh, testing uh, tools out there, you know, you'll end up using Task Manager to kind of figure out what the hell is going on with the performance, right? So performance testing can be performed across the web and even done in different parts of the country. Since it's known that the response time of the internet itself vary by region, right? It can also be done in in-house, although routers would then need to be configured to introduce a lag without would typically occur in a public network. So when we look at testing and not testing in, you know, testing in general and, and kind of figure out how you're going to, where you're going to do the testing, you know, it's important to understand that, you know, rendering and um, server response can be also connected to regional, right? Regional, like if you go to South Africa, you've got your maximum, your maximum internet speed there is 10 megabytes per second, right? And do you see how that affects it? Uh, so region by region is very important, and um, that's the thing about performance testing. If you're going to do performance testing, then you should make sure that you accommodate that, you accommodate the regional lag. Uh, you can set up your equipment so that you can create some lag, right? Um, or, you know, just, just a lab scenario, um, which, which is very important. So, uh, and you know when you look at testing as well you can also go and inside of your goals you can go and, and determine the, the target market for the certain web service for instance I'm just using it as an example uh, you can set the target market and go okay the target market is is this and that and let's say the target market is in Australia or in South Africa where the internet is slower than in the US um, you know then we need to accommodate our equipment and we need to do the testing accordingly and to make sure that we're doing it correctly. And this is why I said in, this, in, in the beginning that like performance specification is very critical, you know, and everything needs to be documented, whatever happens. And a lot of people skip this step, um, which is so crucial. And if you skip this step, then the testing is redundant, right? So getting back to the whole region thing, although routers would need to be configured to introduce the lag, right? I want you to put emphasis on that, right? Load should be introduced to the system with a realistic point. For example, if 50% of the system uses base will be according to the system via, let's say, a 56K modem connection, and then other half would be a, you know, a normal, let's say, 50 megabytes per second um, speed line that we are used to here in Northern America, right, or in Europe, right? Then the load injector is like, you need to accommodate that, and you need to set up different scenarios when you do that kind of performance testing, right? So performance testing and functionality testing, two different things, right? And we'll get to them both and we'll understand them both, right? So the last thing that we're going to chat about is questions to ask. Like, what is the questions to ask? Now, performance specifications uh, should ask the following questions at a minimum. So, you know, mean minimum what your documentation needs to be covered. Now, let's have a look in detail. Okay, what is the performance test scope? Okay, now before we before I'm going to dive into the questions that is always asked, um, you always <laughs> try to ask open-ended questions. You know, um, I was also always uh, you know trained back in the day <laughs> that open-ended questions always have a better result than yes or no questions, right? So the minimum questions in detail: what is performance test scope? what subject systems, what interface, what components, etc. Um, and, you know, what is in scope, what is out of scope, right, in this testing. Um, for the user interface, UIS, involved, how many um, concurrent users are expected for each specified peak normal. So, in the beginning, you don't know that, right? You don't know how many users they're going to be, but you can have a general a thing or a feel about it, right? You can say, oh, okay, well, in general, uh, there will be about a hundred users or a thousand or a million users, right? So there's always a way of working from a specific number. So what does the target system, now there's another question, what does the target system hardware look like? Specify all server and network applications configure or appliances configure. So what does the target system hardware look like, right? Now remember a little bit back, I say, what's your target market? 
That's why I said what you're talking. Is it regional? Is it is it local? Is it national? Is it international? 